Clans World Championship, the first golden ticket that will be handed can take down Inquisition. But here we go. We are a couple minutes out there into their planning stages. They are setting, or they would have had the, their bases set. They have a couple minutes to prep to get their attacks ready to go in. But over on the Navi side, we see a little bit of change up to the lineup from last year. We see Gaku, Kazuma, Stars, and Klaus, the original members there that won the World Championship with them. But after that World Championship win, Yuta retired and Bernal was stepped into the squad there, a powerhouse player of his own. But competition, but one of them will be undefeated no more. Let's see who's attacking first. It's going to be the all-star lineup, starting with Stars from Navi. He's brought one Electro Titan in here to support this primarily lava hound balloon push against a base uh set up here by ipro from vn esports gonna be an attack in the bottom right corner first as we see two multi-target infernos set up here to try to frustrate sort of an early poke battle blimp is gonna pop and be able to take down that entire compartment without much difficulty at all invisibility spell going out now Ooh. just to make sure that he's got all the force that he needs to finish that off big zaps coming on through uh, as well as it looks like some magic archers to get lots of long range shots in there are they going to take down the town hall too eric yeah yeah they not only take out both of the infernos but they took out the town hall and as they're striking the town hall directly they're able to hit the monolith behind it that was absolutely insane i want to point out that when he dropped in those super archers they landed in the outside of the base there but when he positioned the clones he got the clones to spawn in that little channel and that kept them in prime position to lock directly out of the town hall and take the strikes through to hit the monolith that was brilliant that was clever and that was only with a couple minutes of planning here as they started off the war just a moment ago and stars is already on track here to have these heroes move through the other side of the base there with ease the world champion begins and here comes to cc pull if he handles that right and can get a word ability to carry him through this other race tower he's in prime position to start us off with a triple good gracious that super archer geometry was fantastic and the follow-up now is looking like an overwhelming force of balloons parading through we've got the Eternal Tome pops now to protect him from so much splash damage, and that is exactly the optimal timing to use it there. Doesn't have to worry at all about a town hall or anything like that. He's just going to use it to protect from straight up incoming fire from that multi target Inferno and the Eagle Artillery, both obliterated now. Wow. It's going to be additional balloons stacked <laughs> on the backside to just finish this base off, and Stars will leave little to imagination as it is all revealed here and now. The three star coming in absolutely dominant showing for this attacker yeah that was that was brutal that was how you start off a war in the upper bracket that's how stars get it done to start off the war that was brilliant usually uh, when we see these box bases and people try to do a super archer bomb usually they're be coming in and trying to land on top of a scatter shot compartment and try to reach from the middle of the base there but that was a really clever attack there i think he's outside of the box. an army that is uh, like, you know, down to the individual troop, ideally positioned to get the best chance at a three star and then to execute all in such a short window of time. We'll see if Demo can do the same now for BNE e Sporting over on the other side, much more heavily uh, based on Electro Titans in this setup. Big lightning zap into the core of the base. We'll be able to grab that Inferno Tower uh, and get some additional damage done uh, against an Expo and that Grand Warden platform uh taking them all down is going to be a nice early shot here uh for him but how's he going to follow up with this warden walk eric well he used the warden walk to connect into the area that was taken out with the lightning the lightning wasn't able to quite reach that rage tower so he's still gonna have to deal with that a little bit later on he's got a siege perk selected right now and it looks like he's gonna take the long approach to the town hall going through the eagle artillery across the base there that's typically the way that is going to be the stronger chance for a triple, but obviously at least some risk for the Town Hall takedown. But it makes sure the Town Hall Blast is not hitting the healers early, and that's very important for an Electric Titan attack. They have the punch to cross through the base there, and he accepts the risk that is involved in that, and he will pop the board ability to protect him through this Rage Tower as he charges the heaviest defenses first. Nice wall breaks. King and Siege Breaks troops working on the outside. He's got Witches out there as well. He pops the King ability early to generate some Barbarians and surge ahead there before the defensive queen can lock onto him and he's able to take her down with a lot of his hp conserved 
Now he's got the jump to carry him in towards the town hall, and now we get to see how he handles that area. But overall, looking like a very clean setup. If he can handle that Royal Champion on the right side, his Royal Champion is getting targeted a bit over there, and he's oh, he's, he's taking a lot of damage over there. I feel like he's wasted his Royal Champion right there. She gets shut down completely, and that's going to have detrimental effects on the rest of the attack here. Yeah, that one skeleton trap just make all the difference distracting her for so long and giving that defending Royal Champion just as much of a chance to fire away. Demo is having a lot of difficulty now trying to wrap around the outside of this base and still finding an enemy hero standing up on the other end. No headhunters to add on to this offense. And yet these witches are still going on a minute left. And as long as they can keep these point defenses firing at something else besides them, that is a big murder ball of super high DPS with a lot of wizards joined on uh, to try to get this base finished off. Keep those skeletons out in front soaking the damage. As long as it's just a slow and steady incoming stream of damage, he'll be fine. The scatter shot though is just such a big overwhelming blast of force. I don't know how he's going to be able to get through this compartment alive. Here it is, the final encounter. Scattershot's fired away, gets the lock on the wizards. Boom, they go down. Multi-mortar annihilates the witches. And that is a two-star 96% for demo of BN Esporting. Ultimately cost them the three star. And now Navi has the lead as they send in Gaku. He's going to be breaking out the super witches. This is very out of the ordinary for Gaku to be using Super Witches, but he's not gonna be using any lightning with it. He just starts in a ward walk in at the bottom of the base here. And I'm kind of curious, witches are very, very good at charging through the town hall directly. So I, I'm kind of thinking that he goes right through the monolith and into this big open space and charges at the town hall and takes advantage of their raid. What do you think about that, Woody? I love it. As long as he can get enough spell deployment to support that early dive and make sure that those super witches stay healthy into the interior. I mean, what, what's he worried about on the back end? There is an eagle artillery there protected by two multi-target infernos. But as long as the big boys are taking shots through the super witches, you don't really have to worry about that damage. It's just kind of the spread of all these various defenses. Uh, the scatter shots are also going to be a big problem up at 12 o'clock. Uh, and over at that right o'clock, uh, nine o'clock position on the left side, uh, there's a, a few big obstacles. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to see the fireworks go off as they charge right up the gut and go for this town hall early on here. Yeah, I like that because the big boys are going to strike the town hall, but the witches themselves are going to sit back and fight off the lava pups there. So he's able to take it down there and everybody's just going to chill and hang Ooh. out until he has that town hall poison fade while they power through the lava pups there. Now they can start to make their way forward, still taking advantage of their rage and letting the ward ability and the healers continue to just give a lot of protection there. The jump carries him through, the flame flinger take out the scatter shot and let the Royal Champion take in the scatter shot off on the right. And he's got a beeline push right through the middle of the face there into the Eagle Artillery. And his King is even wrapped around the outside with the Phoenix to provide some back end taking. Looking really, really solid here, but he's starting to run out of resources and he's gonna lean heavy on this Queen ability to clear the back side of the base. Particularly, I'm a little bit nervous about that defensive Grand Borden and a couple of straggling defenses he left behind because time could definitely become an issue even if he ends up getting all the defenses down. And of all defenses that could have caused a problem for Gaku, it's that mortar now that's popping off against the Super Witches that's taken down one, maybe even two of them. I still see one alive left in the corner there. The healer's doing their best to keep her topped off, but the consistent problem that Super Witches have time and again is time. Only 30 seconds left to try to take out 12% of the base, and this is a big clump of troops that needs to get more spread out, needs to find a way to take down that Archer Tower and Gold Storage on the top right side. Sneaky Goblins are not going to be enough to get the job done, and at this point, I don't think the big boys are going to be able to wander over there in time. Gaku is going to get right. a high percentage two star, knocking out the defenses over on the left side there. Does drop the invis and oh, tries to whoa, get a couple whoa, more whoa. To get the shot, but can they take out the. Oh, man. No, they, they can't. Just <laughs> too little DPS. I mean, they can finish off the Elixir Sword. They get max massive damage against any... Uh, it's going to be placeholders on that board for now. But here we go. Let's dive into the next one. Let's see if VN Esporting is able to tie up the score on stars. They won't be able to catch up on percentage. They will one way or another be at 
minimum three buildings behind. But it looks like Exo Danny has his blimp get intercepted by black air bombs. He got the defensive queen down, but wait, the queen, where, where's this queen going? She's chasing the CC. He missed the funnel. Okay, this is what separates the best players in the world from the rest. He needs to find a way to adapt and overcome with the queen going off course here. She's still in a safe spot. She still gets the protection of the Yeti bomb there and the buildings were cleared that compartment, but she is not on her course towards the town hall and he has to find a different way to take it down and still get the highest value out of this queen charge. Does get good placement on that poison spell, taking down the enemy Lava Hound, and this Archer Queen is going to stay relatively safe here with plenty of healing protection, but not going to get the uh, angle of attack that he was looking for. He is going to be able to get down an enemy multi-target Inferno, and it's going to get the lock onto the Eagle Artillery as well. Exo Danny finding a lot of value there nonetheless. And it's the first time that Hog Riders have stormed into the competition now here from this uh, attack by Danny going to send in the Eternal Tome, but Dunn doesn't manage to catch that pack up on the top left side. It's going to force out the Freeze to try to get a little bit more value out of them before they get taken down by, uh, ultimately, it looks like the Builder Huts. Unfortunate placement on the Invisibility spell as well is going to prevent them from being able to follow up with any sort of force whatsoever. And these Hoggies have just evaporated against the might that Gaku's defenses have put up now. Finally gets the second star, and Danny is just rubbing his forehead, wishing that there could have been something more that he could have done. Doesn't keep the Archer Queen alive either, and with that, this is going to be a, one of the lowest percentage two stars that we've seen so far today, Eric. Yeah, that's a bit rough there. I mean, he had to he had to do what he had to do there. He had to make sure that he at least got the two star. It was a bit risky because the town hall wasn't activated. A lot of times during like lava loot attacks there, you can get things like the electric owl to go get the town hall activation, or you can get the lava hounds bursting to get some burst damage or lava puffs to attack the town hall and activate it early. But during the hog attack, he ended up surging past the town hall, popping the early board ability. And I don't know if you can see the scorch marks on the ground there by the town hall, but when those hogs started to make their way in down there he hit a wave of giant bombs if the queen could have gone through that area the queen would have been able to handle all those giant bombs without any difficulty and that would have left very little for traps on the other half of the base the hogs could have done great over on that left side but when he is forced to go the way that he had to go then he didn't really have a choice he had to put them through the town hall he ends up getting a pretty respectable amount of defense or defense is down there 83 percent is yeah they have just had an absolutely uh stellar day so far the first two wars coming out with clear and convincing victories three star margins of victory in some cases and once again starting off extremely strong I regret that we haven't seen anything from Clash Champs yet, but we have still got a lot left to see from him them, uh, going forward. Well, let's check out Bernal next. Remember the new addition to the Navi lineup. Navi currently with that one-star lead over VN Esporting, who has yet to get the three-star against them. Bernal's going to try to cement that advantage by getting another three-star now for his squad, and it's going to be a Hog Rider follow-up. Bernal is so excellently skilled at these queen charges getting deep into the base. We'll see if he's able to do that once again here today. Looking a little bit iffy from him on uh, the, the reaction to this CC stab in early on. But he's going to stay cool. His fingers are flying across that device, just getting every single tap at picture-perfect uh, timing and on the exact right tile to get exactly what he needs. One minute into the attack now, Eric, he's setting up for the second stage. Yeah, I really like, it's It's kind of fun that he's doing this exact attack because this is literally what we just saw fail. So we get to see it in action again. We get to see the Hog Riders one more time and we get to see if Navi can do it better because that would be interesting if he's able to pull through. But this queen definitely is on track. He's able to push through and he didn't have the queen miss the funnel there, which is very rare for a Yeti Bomb to have the queen miss the funnel the way that it did. So that was very odd, but it was because of the CC in that last one. Let's see if he can fight. Or he already, he already fought the CC with the blimp. That's one of the biggest advantages of using the blimp here is getting the CC full in advance so he can fight it in safety. And that makes sure the queen can just wrap through here. Her healers are a bit close to the town hall right here. And the trader traps in a pull are closer. So he's going to have to burn a freeze on the town hall regardless to get his way through that invisibility tower. So that's going to happen anyways. But at the same time, okay. Okay. Oh, this is bad. Bernal's in trouble. 
walking right into the jaws of this beast. LX forces are going to start to fire away at that clump of healers, and they are down. Giga Bomb has exploded right in their face, and this Urcha Queen forced to pop off her ability is just going to have to get as much value as she can still left with no healers to top her back off. Meanwhile, Bernal has insulted the top side of this base, but hogs are flinging all over the map. Spring traps have ejected them from this arena, and the three-star is... Emerging ever still more capable. elusive for <laughs> Look at the queen. She's still alive. She's still alive. Don't call it yet, Woody. He's not out of this. He's just got to finish it up in time. All defenses are There's down. So the rare champion right has the ability. He just needs to get in the top corner. He's very, very close right now here, Woody. He's got the queen down I south working on the scourges. He, he needs to I time his RC ability. No. Oh. No. Oh. The shield could have made it there. You're so, so oh. right. But 99% two star in the end. But somehow the hogs were given so much cover. The other heroes were given so much cover. He wasn't taking any damage to the queen. And she ultimately almost carries him through. And yeah, 99% time fellows. He was very patient with that RC shield. He knew what he needed to do. And he made his best attempt to make it happen. But now with the stars potentially tied, or with the stars tied up here for a matter of fact, if V. And Esporting gets a triple here. I Pro definitely has his work cut out for him as he pushes in with a queen charge right towards the town hall with the king. Getting a funnel to go in towards the scatter shot on the right side. But he definitely needs to get the queen to take the turn. This is going to be difficult because he's very compact on the outside of the base. And there's a little bit of a buffer. A little bit of a, a two-tile gap there that would potentially cause the queen to miss the entry into the town hall. And that's something he's going to have to overcome here with he is not going into that compartment yet. Drawn out by the Barbarian King. And we'll have a little bit more distraction there as well with a, a Battle Builder Hut uh, and that Barbarian King platform to try to keep her out and away from the interior. She's going to pop that ability now and we'll get a few more shots off. But damn, she manages to get the multi-target Inferno down, but that Town Hall remains elusive to her. The pull of the CC has happened as well, and with the Lava Hound floating out, that is going to be a lot more that she's going to have to work through if she wants to make it all the way to the Town Hall. Eagle Artillery has started to activate and is firing away at her. That is going to be another big DPS check for him to have to overcome. Oh. Eagle's <laughs> going to try to top her back off. She's invisible now, so at least he's got that going for her. Stone Slammer floats in on the left side to set up for the next stage of this hit, as we've only got one Lava Hound to protect for these balloons, Eric. Yes, and he, he already used his Queen ability. He burns a Freeze to try to save the healers, but the Freeze is a little bit late. The healers took a lot of damage there from that Town Hall, and they're going to be weakened up there. Keep an eye out for Red Air Bombs, because a single Red Air Bomb would probably smoke the rest of his healers here. But the Slammer opens up into Dragon Rider. He's got the Ward ability, protecting his approach through the defensive Road Champion, and it looks like the Headhunters are on her now. They will take her down. Now the trick... Oh, there goes the Red Air Bomb, and there goes uh. the healers, and the Queen is in danger now with the defensive Queen still standing i am not sure about this one right now woody i'm concerned but wait the electric owl is working on the queen but no all the balloons go down the rage multi the rage scatter shot is able to hold the line and once again navi's bases hold strong very strong defenses from navi today underdog teams there hanging out Trying to get their first win, trying to recover their chances and make it to the playoffs. But here we go, guys. It is time for Kazuma to come in for Navi. And he's got a recall Queen Charge into Lalo. I'm kind of impressed whenever he breaks out the recall. He's definitely been one of the teams that is able to, or one of the players in general, that's able to get a lot of value out of the recall here and use it very, very effectively. So we'll see where he wants to push this Queen. Right now, she has a couple different options as she pushes in that corner. She go to the scatter shot or she go to the multi or maybe he pushes her in and find out which one she goes to and then he goes in and recalls her and sends her to the other one i don't know i'm not sure what the play is here but it's kind of looking like the queen didn't go to the multi inferno at the moment he he recalls her okay i wasn't ready for that i thought he would actually take one of those key targets before he recalled her out so now let's see what he can do as he redeploys the queen off on the left side of the base and begins a charge towards the eagle artillery what do you think about that recall woody that was kind of odd right yeah unusual follow-up here from kazuma but you always love to see a little bit of unorthodox play from these top players it often means that uh it 
that I have something to learn and uh, to, to try to figure out uh, how they're getting value out of that sort of attack. But happy to see uh, the distraction here of that scatter shot, uh, allowing the flame player to get the shots off and finish that off. The Archer Queen has taken an absolute beating so far, but having popped her ability with the rage to follow up, she's going to be topped off once again. It could be Rocket Loons coming out of the CC, and that could have been a big problem for anything that was nearby. But uh, it looks like there are not going to be any additional shots off uh, by them, and it's just going to be that model that's causing a little bit of mayhem for the two heroes that still are standing in the center of uh, that charge. Kazuma running low on time, though, really needs to get the second stage of this attack started off very quickly, uh, but he's so laser-focused on this hero dive that I don't know how he's going to follow up uh, and get the value out of these two dozen balloons. The bulk of this force has just got barely over a minute to get the rest of this base finished off, and not even a single star claimed yet, Eric. Yeah, he's got the setup for the Town Hall, and with the number of buildings that he's taking out right now, he should be able to clear out the perimeter defenses here, and the Town Hall should activate upon arrival of these balloons. But he gets the Hound to travel forward, and is able to burst and clear out tons and tons of red air bombs, and the Tornado Trap before the balloons arrive at the Town Hall. So a bit of power through that. There's the Warded Ability right at the last possible second. The Freeze holds it off until he's able to get through that, and he's able to push his way into the bottom. But yeah, with a Rage Down Multi Inferno and the scatter shot obviously is a big difficulty. It's a matter of can the Royal Champion stay alive in the mix here. There's no defensive heroes in the backside that can stop her, but there's a lot of defense and they're kind of like in a big clump here. So that's going to make sure that the Royal Champion can't only get fired on one at a time, which hurts her a lot as she pushes through, but he'll get the stun onto the scatter shot, and if he gets the scatter shot down, then the Bloods have a chance to survive, but wait, look at the clock. We're not going to find out if they have enough punch to make it through the monolith because he's out of time. Not yet uh, far and ahead, uh, but it's going to take a lot of strength mustered by VN Esporting with their last two hits to try to get back into this fight uh, and overcome the... Uh, hurdle that Navi has set before them. You know, on that last strike, I'm still just thinking again to how difficult it is to get those balloons, to path over to the Town Hall, kill it, and then mm -hmm. pop that Grand Warden's Eternal Tome at the perfect timing, and to get the balloons out of harm's way. Even with the haste spell on that last one, he was not able to get those balloons off of the Giga Poison in time to path through the rest of the mm -hmm. base. Just too little time to finish off these uh, huge, expansive bases. I remember we have three minutes and 30 seconds in attacks for a little while there, and it just became so much easier to get those three stars. <laughs> now that we're back down to three minutes and have consistently been for a long time now, it just is a constant reminder of how razor thin uh, the margin of victory can be with these really short attacks. Oh yeah, and when they're going with multi-phase attacks there, like this one using the Warden Walk, it is an Electro Titan smash attack here, and Klaus's base is, I don't, I'm, okay, he's not using the lightning on this one here. A lot of times when we see these Electro Titan smash attacks there, they pair it with lightning, and that soaks up a lot of their spells. And Electro Titans move through the base there very slow if they have to attack a wall. They move very, very fast and efficiently when they're attacking defenses, and they're dealing damage with their auras rather than their fist. Their fists don't do a lot of damage to the walls, and it's the only thing they can attack walls. So jumps are critical to carry them through, and with a very compartmentalized base off here, he's moving through smooth, but he needs to secure the town hall. A bunch of the troops are veering off towards the town hall now. He's got the freeze to lock it down. The queen right there, she has her ability attack there. She'll pop it, and he will end up surviving for now. But the back end still looks threatening, and the world champion is in charge of making it happen. Lots of small compartments on the interior of this base. It was an interesting choice to bring the Electro Titans here. You see a couple of them stuck on the walls for the top side. And even with the jump spells to try to get over these compartments, it's been difficult uh, finding the right angle of attack. Nonetheless, Imran is able to hop over the some of the walls. In this case, with that uh, Royal Champion able to stab through the last remaining defenses there, you see still a Barbarian King on defense, but that is not going to be enough to hold off Imran, wow. the number wow. one attacker for being esporting the first three star from this squad, which is going to be bringing them up to the same star level as Navi. 
They're going to have a deficit of 5% over. Avi is going to be in the driver's seat having to attack first. That means that they don't have the luxury of just being able to clean up for a high percentage two-star. They really do need to go for all three here. But who better to make it happen than Klaus? Such a strong deliverance we have seen from him across many, many wars. He is going to be moving in first with that battle blimp and drops it right oh. in the top side of the base. With invisibility, that is going to be massive change. Chain lightning damage zapping through a ton of crucial targets here. Wow, he yeah, gets he the scatter into that compartment well, though. As that clean, or no, that's uh, we're, yeah, this yeah. Uh, he, he cleared out that entire compartment. I thought he fell short there for a minute. That air defense stays standing for the rocket balloons because of all the black air bombs. But he was able to sail over the top of it, and he barely landed in that compartment. On top of clearing out that entire compartment and getting the funnel set up here, getting the CC pole, he also got the poison tower to trigger, which is going to make so when his heroes start to push in the area, they're not going to be slowed down at all here. But Klaus is a master at the Sui heroes here, and he can get so much value out of these heroes with a simple setup and with a blizzard. I mean, he's thinking a, a page out of Star's book here with a blizzard. And he set this up very, very nicely. But he'll leave that town hall into the later parts of the attack here. He's got, he's got the Wraith Tower covering a multi-inferno and the town hall. And he's got two other multi-infernos and the sweepers still very likely going to be standing on the base here after the heroes push in. So if the heroes can get all the way into that sweeper and that multi, that would be the prime amount of value that he'd be looking for here, Woody. And Hunters are going to be joining into the fight here to take down the enemy queen. And the Archer Queen on offense is going to be uh, jumping over those walls. That one jump spell now deployed by Klaus to get her a little bit closer toward that monolith. Popping in with well, the warden on as ground. well. And that's going to be a lot of damage to stack in on the top side. But where are these rocket... Uh, wh where's that rocket loon going to attack from? It looks like he could get them uh, onto that wizard <laughs> tower on the top side. Follow up some with some law loots as well, but like, does he even need troops at this point? The heroes have done so much damage to this base. They're about to get that second star. One minute left for, I guess we can call it cleanup, but the main phase of this attack is now underway, Eric. Wow, that queen went for days. He had the the ward ability protecting the queen to drive her to the town hall, but he still has to get through two multi infernos, and he does not have any more spells. He's got this other multi. He'll come in behind the sweeper. He's got a dragon rider. If he can push the dragon rider in, even if all the balloons all die, the dragon rider can finish it. He's got the phoenix. He crosses the percentage up. He's so close. Dragon rider steps in. Hits a red air bomb. Watch for black air bombs. Watch for black air bombs. If he hits a black air bomb, he might be done. He takes the multi. He's got to get the sweeper. And Klaus has done it. He's He's got the trouble and what an attack that was wild i told you he can do amazing amazing things with that hero dive and he does he delivers and navi is gonna be the first team to make it into the playoffs that was absolutely insanity wow <laughs> woody uh, yeah to, to just see one more of you would be a lot of fun let's see how elec does in the last attack of this war yeah, and this one's interesting because even though they can't take the win anymore, we get to see that if Klaus ended up not making it through that multi-inferno, whether this plan would have been good enough to carry them into victory. So it looks like it's going to be a super witch attack here. I, I think the witches are going to all path north here. That log launcher is opening up the walls here, and the witches are, are they going to split or are they going to go in? It's a long approach across the base here towards the town hall. He's got multiple rage towers. And he's got the first one activated right now, boosting the damage, but he'll ward ability through it. He's gonna potentially get some heavy damage, maybe even destroy the monolith, but I feel like the battle is gonna repair all the way up ahead there. So a lot of his witches walked on him, and that's a little bit of a concern here, especially with the queen about to potentially get locked onto that defensive lava hound here. Yeah, with a slow attack style like Super Witches, you definitely don't want to give those battle, battle builders the chance to repair buildings and just give you even more DPS you have to dish out for the three star. I will say Alec has got the deploy down pretty quickly here. And so uh, fortunately for him, he's had a lot of time for those big boys to start walloping away and give those, which is time to finish off the defenses uh, to follow up with. But yeah, that monolith standing right next to the town hall is going to be dishing out a ton of damage. And it looks like a super witch has taken a lot from an enemy expo. 
got to lean on those healers now to keep her popped off as the queen now makes a super dive down into the deep interior of the base. The guttural screams of the defenders are going to be echoing through the halls as Elec has just wiped them out, but has lost the, his own queen in the process. Archer Queen is down for the count, and it's up to these super witches jumping over the last layer of walls to try to finish this base off here. Yeah, that was uh, a strong push there, but the defensive king is holding the line here pretty strong in the back end. He's going to run into some time issues here by the looks of it, and that typically is what happens with super witches. So, as you can see, he's not going to have enough time. I don't think he has enough force either. The defensive Grand Warden hits like an absolute truck right there, and he's going to claim the last of these super witches. Big boys will hang on for another, uh, almost another strike there, almost got that Inferno down. So you can see that one way or another, that triple from Klaus was going to send Navi into the playoffs. And what a performance that they had there. It was a wild, wild war. A lot closer than, uh, or a lot lower score and closer than I expected it to be there towards the end. So that, that was a interesting way for that war to develop and then a clutch way at the end there for it to close out there navi takes the win as klaus absolutely clean house that final attack that was insane that was one of the coolest attacks there that we've seen all day long but you know what we expect nothing less from klaus but it is 12 stars for navi 11 stars for vn esporting and a decisive percentage advantage into navi's favor as well so I mean, well played here from VN. They're not done yet. They're going to move down into the two and one bracket. They just need to win one of their next two wars, and they can go back and potentially get another swing at Navi in the playoffs. So they're still in prime position. They've performed very, very well today, and we'll, we'll definitely see more of them in tomorrow.